The moment is here, you can stop your search. It's Comics by Perch. Hey everybody, this is Perch. I promise. Uh, this video has a subject I've touched on what feels like a billion times before, but the answer is going to be different. Or the material that I'm going to give you is going to be different. So there is some there is some newness to it. So if you're kind of rolling your eyes and sighing in the first 30 seconds, don't worry, I did too. But uh, we are going to go somewhere a little bit different with this. So let's read this mail. Perch. I can almost always tell where the person is at in terms of their irritation with me by the greeting at this point, but <laughs> we'll, we'll go with this. Perch. I hear you talk about how comic creators are not ideological and people just need to shut up and get over it. I find that fairly insulting. As a person who's read Spider-Man for all of his life, for a person who's read Spider-Man for all of his life, it irritates me that you think I just need to shut up and move on. Why should I keep spending my money on something when the creators actively hate me and push an ideology that I find offensive. I'd like you to explain yourself because I just don't get it. Okay. So, you know, I, I, there's no, I won't go point by point through that mail because it, it's entirely inaccurate in terms of my view of things. And if, if there's anybody listening right now who's like, yeah, that person makes some good points. I, I mean, sure, maybe, but not against me. I don't know how many times I've said it till blue in the face. I'm sure I said it last week. Only buy your stuff. Only put your money on stuff that, uh, that frankly, you know, you feel good about. You're never obligated to just shut up and spend money. And in terms of, uh, you know, I, 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 I don't understand how somebody feels who's been buying these products all the time and, and they've gone in a, a different direction, ideological or otherwise. Um, I do understand. I am the guy who made the videos talking about it is uh, is gaslighting and unreasonable to expect that when you make major changes to the characters, whether it's the race of Little Mermaid or, you know, the uh, the new Nick Fury or bringing out Bobby Drake is gay or any of those kinds of things, you're going to make people upset. You're going to make people upset because the entire nature of comics and this type of storytelling is to get you connected and attached to something. That's the whole point of it. That's that is their mission. That is their business model. And so when you when you have that as your business model and then you make you know big changes, which may not seem big to you, the creator, but are big to the fans, they're going to be upset, and that's reasonable. The only thing I've said, and, and at this point, I have to believe people are intentionally mis misinterpreting or misrepresenting it, because it's not that hard. It's simply that if something is making you mad at some point for yourself, it's good to step away. It's just good to, it's good for your own sanity. Now, I'm not telling you you have to do that. And I'm not telling you that it's, you know, that if you've loved something your entire life, you just have to let go of that love completely. I'm saying it's not necessarily happy or not, not necessarily good. It doesn't make you happy to be mad all the time. It doesn't. And I, I've heard some people say, well, no, I'm just mad 1% of the time and then at this and then 99% happy on everything else. Okay, then cool. You're you. I'm not. Okay, all I can do is what I'm presented. All I can work with is what I'm presented. What I'm presented looks like people are mad all the time. Now, I'm sure you're not, I would hope you're not walking around all angry all the time. But that's you. I, I'm, I'm making an assumption here that you're an adult and you're making your own calls in your life. And by the way, I'll clear one other thing up because I get this too. Uh, I'm not the parent or the teacher. I've jokingly said, you know, I, I dad perch level advice that's mainly because of the way I talk and kind of the monotone, boring way it goes across sometimes. But I don't consider myself your superior. Has a bigger dick? Sure. But other than that, I mean, I, this is not a uh, teacher-student relationship here. It's just, it, 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 this would be people talking in a shop if we were in, in person. So if I say something and you're like, ah, oh, I'm supposed to just, you know, do what you say? No, I'm, I, God, I hope not. No. But like I said, I wanted to take this in a different direction. We haven't gotten there yet. So let me talk about ideology for a moment. And this is my view, only my view. It's the way I look at things, okay? So in my mind, there are kind of two flavors of how ideology gets presented. Now, obviously, there's many, many different ideologies and many, many different sides. I'm not talking about sides. I'm talking about kind of the impact. The reality is absolutely the, the 
creator, the writer, the artist, the people who are crafting the book, their ideology often comes through in the comic, the movie, the TV show, whatever it happens to be in some form or fashion. Sometimes it's nightly obvious, like, you know, you're listening to a, a song with uh, Eminem and he's going, fuck George Bush. And you're like, all right, he made it very clear, right? You, you know where he's coming from. Uh, I remember when uh, that was in, or no, it wasn't Bush or did he go after Cheney? I know he go after Cheney multiple times. And uh, these people were like, I've got, I've, oh my God, can you believe he attacked Cheney in a song? I've got to get to my fainting couch. Yes, yes, I can believe it. I can, I can, I can believe it. Have you listened to any of his music? Yes, yes, I am. I understand why he might not like like Dick Cheney. Okay, but in general, um, creators absolutely do put their ideology or a piece of their ideology into their work. Uh, absolutely, they do. I think, though, that ideology hits in two different ways. Um, and I'll give you an example. Uh, right now, you know, Mags Visaggio, comic book uh, writer, um, has been uh, on this the chair, I don't know, has been talking about Kurt Cobain is trans. And uh, this hits her of several of my friends and me, because, you know, we, we lived in Seattle for a decent length of time. You know, I have met Kurt Cobain when he was alive. I've seen concerts with Cobain. I, I, I'm not Cobain's best friend by any stretch of the imagination. You know, but I saw Cobain enough that when I would wave, Cobain would do the recognition like, oh yeah, you know, enough. And, uh, Cobain uh, was not trans. And Mags knows this. Mags is, is not, you know, doing this because Mags truly believes that, that uh, you know, she's uncovered some giant mystery of the universe. Mags is doing this because it gets Mags' attention. Because it's an, a nice thing. And I'm talking about right now, so I'm giving it attention. But this is really Mags' view. There isn't a there isn't widespread mainstream belief that Kurt Cobain is trans. In fact, if anything, there's probably more widespread belief that Kurt Cobain was, uh, you know, murdered by Courtney Love. If you go to Seattle, that's still something that a lot of people believe in their hearts. Um, but but let's say Mags uh, gets a comic, and uh, let's say that a new volume of Kim and Kim is coming out, right? And Mags uh, decides to do a flashback or a backstory or something where the characters meet Kurt Cobain. So they're going to a concert and they meet Kurt Cobain and um, they, you know, or, or they, yeah, we'll, we'll stick with the flashback. There's other ways they can do it. They're off in space. Maybe they go to some, you know, galactic encyclopedia and knower of all things. And, you know, the joke or the gag in the comic is that, you know, they're supposed to ask about the meaning of life. But one of the Kims is like, is Cobain trans? Was Cobain trans? And the, the seer of all things goes, yes, Cobain was trans. And like, I knew it. So Mags could write a scene like that in a comic or do a flashback where they go back in time and you know, Cobain admits to these fictional characters that, that he's trans and it shows up in the comic. And now it's comic book canon. Uh, that scenario I just described to you is, is very, uh, very, very possible that could happen. And if you're a fan of Cobain, then you're pissed off because now this kind of clearly insane concept, this this ludicrous thing, has been tossed into a comic, you know, printed, read, you know, and, and distributed around to lots and lots of people. And if you're a fan of Kurt Cobain, you feel like somebody just you know took a massive dump on the person you like and the music you 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 go for, and this makes you angry. Uh, it's reasonable, by the way, to be angry. A hundred percent reasonable. Anybody who's saying like, ah, don't be mad. It's fine. It's fine. Whatever. Uh, don't be mad. Again, I would give the same advice I mentioned earlier. Of uh, If you find yourself like not sleeping, like getting a rash, like super fucking pissed about it. At some point, it's wise to distance yourself. It's probably wise to sit down with a, you know, have a conversation with yourself and go, yeah, but this person, this writer, Mags, is a lunatic. And this, you know, little indie comic here sold less than, you know, sold a couple thousand copies max. And in the grand scheme of things, if I fast forward 20 years, nobody is going to care at all. Or won't even be remembered. It's, this is a blip on society. That might feel good to you, um, except, you know, let's say uh, Mags gets a television deal and they option Kim and Kim and, and pilots get shot and series go in. And Mags, uh, as, you know, a showrunner or you know, somebody in the writer's room, uh, throws that gag into a show. Okay, now this tiny little comic is now spouting the same kind of bullshit nonsense 
to, you know, hundreds of thousands of people on TV. I mean, well, let's not kid ourselves about that, <laughs> but more, right? The audience has grown. Now this, uh, this bullshit is, is feeding out. And now you have people like, hey, yeah, maybe he was trans. I saw his picture once of him in a dress. He could be trans. And then before you know it, this, this, uh, this, you know, this fact, this thing that is, that is real has been eroded by lunatics. And that's going to make you very mad. So what do you do? I don't have a good answer for you. And now we can game theory out this point. That's kind of what I wanted to do with you right now. So, that, so first off, for those of you like, Birch doesn't understand. Hopefully laying out that scenario it helps you. <laughs> I totally understand. The question is not, do I get it? The question is, what do you want to do with it? Okay, so you have a couple options. Again, if, you, if you're not familiar with game theory, we can play it out here. Okay, game theory. First of all, understand the, the oxygen effect. If you give it oxygen, you are increasing awareness of this dumb thing. And in particular with comics, because of the low volume in which they often sell, particularly indie stuff, your oxygen, your attention to it, somebody going out and doing a stream on it, does nothing but give it, in some cases, double the marketing it had before. I mean, I, I'll be, I've said this before. I think that, uh, that Zach, who did the reviews of uh, America Chavez, did, did, got frankly put more eyes on the book in a lot of cases than, than Marvel was with their marketing. Marvel was not heavily marketing America Chavez, the comic. I think Zach did more marketing for that than, than Marvel did. Now, that, again, this isn't an argument to say, you know, oh, he should shut up and never say anything. It's just a fact. You know, that's is bringing more eyes on things. And, and the, the, the problem is this. You face this, this challenge where you can just be silent and say nothing, but then internally you feel bad. You're like, well, I have an opinion. And I'm angry about something, and this bothers me immensely, but I have to keep secret about it. And sometimes when you keep secret about it, it allow you know, the thing advances. Now, I would argue, by the way, if, if nobody says anything, and it advances anyway, meaning like in this Kim and Kim example, it becomes a TV show and everything else, but everybody stayed quiet and she got no attention over it. Then that was going to happen regardless. The staying silent, not making people aware really didn't factor into this whole thing. The, the game was already played, but it doesn't feel good to stay silent when, you know, you're upset with something. If you're a big fan of Kurt Cobain in this example, you know, you're pissed. At me. So you say something, all right. And, but when you say something, um, you're you're drawing attention to it. What happens when you draw your attention to it, especially in the polarized society we have now, one of two things is going to happen. Either, um, you know, people who are reading this are going to go, wow, this is terrible, I'm angry. You know, like when, when Bounding Into Comics does an article, there's two audiences that that site has. One, uh, one audience, the bigger one, um, is the one that goes, I can't believe this stuff too. I agree with bounding. That's why I follow bounding into comics. That's why I follow these articles. I am angry like they're angry. Okay, so if you if you point something out, people are going to be rightfully disgusted. But there's a second audience that is also following this site for no other reason than to take the opposite opinion. For no other reason than to just, you know, think think the reverse. So you get people who normally would not support this, you know, fairly tiny, insignificant book suddenly lining up to support it, or at least claim they're going to support it, and bringing even more attention to the thing. So, you know, we have seen this with comics. The, the problem with all this is the, um, this kind of attention, this kind of uh, hate marketing and everything else, it's not going to get a comic to 25,000, 50,000, 100,000 copies. It's going to take a 2,000 copy selling book and bring it to 3,000. That's it. It, it. it is very minor success. However, the controversy does add. And so if you're an indie, if you're a smaller writer, if you're somebody where 2,000 copies sold is actually a good number, that kind of controversy works. I, look, I, again, this might trigger and irritate all kinds of people. I know it does, but it is a fact. You know, the reason why several of the crowdfunding books, not several, some, a few, couple, whatever, the reason why people do streams live streams that are more controversial in nature that, you know, take swipes at other channels. Sometimes this one, because it, it's, it's drama. It's, it, it's just, it's drama bait that fuels advertising. That's, that's what it is. That's what, 
that's what you know the articles that are doing this are they're they're trying to get clicks and if they get clicks they get attention and quite frankly it doesn't matter too much when you're in this business and you're putting this stuff out it doesn't really matter too much if you get hate attention or like attention attention is attention controversy is clicks or cash if you're Eric Bischoff but but anyway that that's just that is a fact the the but the problem is it's it's still not good you know there's a reason why mags is not uh, you know senior writer at Marvel. Megs is not writing the Avengers or any kind of big title, because the, the, frankly, the work that Mags puts on the page has has not made it worth it. If Mags was a brilliant writer that produced just amazing comics and drew lots of audiences to Mags's work, even if Mags was a complete and absolute lunatic on Twitter, there's a strong chance one of the big two would still hire her to do work. But the work quality isn't there, and the drama is, and so it's just not worth it. But it's very easy. The bar to actually get into comics and do something is pretty low. So a lot of these people sit there and hover at the, you know, 1,000, 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 copies sold level, and that's just what they do. That's, that's where they're at. Uh, the question of whether to give all this oxygen and attention, you know, again, it's up to you. I went through that scenario that I, I say fictional scenario, but I have every, you know, belief that Mags absolutely will start pushing the uh, Cobain is trans agenda into her comic. But I point that out because it's hopefully an easy one to wrap your head around. You know, if you're a fan of this musician and you just like the person for their music, I mean, you didn't you didn't care. I imagine most people are well aware that Kurt Cobain probably leaned left rather than right. In terms of politics, let's see, you're in the grunge scene in Seattle as an alt musician and you had uh, songs like Rape Me and other things. Yeah, I'm, I'm pretty confident Cobain probably had left leaning politics. Many fans of his music, left, right and center, uh, don't think about Cobain's politics. They just like the music. They like what Nirvana did. Or maybe they hate Nirvana. It's fine, too. But whatever. Uh, so to see all this stuff thrust into the trans debate is irritating. It's taking away from the core product music. And that's why that that is exactly why when you see a kind of a, even a throwaway joke in a copy of, you know, Batman around, uh, you know, a, the systemic racism or something like that, people don't like it. They don't like it because they came for Batman and they're getting a Twitter lecture somewhere tucked away in Batman. And it's it's very similar to I want to listen to Cobain's music. I do not want to juggle some, you know, be it, insane half-baked theory that Cobain is a trans person. That's that's where people are coming from. The question is, okay, that makes you upset. What do you want to do with it? And that's that is the the idea that that is the challenge with a lot of this ideological stuff. And it is somewhat of a no-win situation. You can be quiet and then just kind of feel like you've silenced yourself and maybe it gets popular anyway. You can make noise, but you know there's actually a greater percentage by you making noise, you're bringing more attention to it and you're, you're increasing the amount of material that you're now going to be exposed to. I mentioned this before. The reason why Max keeps bringing this stuff up is people keep talking about it, including me right now. And as long as that's happening, it's giving her attention, she's going to keep doing it. I mean, that, that's what a lot of people live for is attention. And if you're a small comic creator, attention sort of equal sales. Again, it's not a good life. Going, you know, selling 3,000 copies of a book instead of 2,000 is still shitty. Like, like that's not, you, you, no one's living their best life there. But it's still an increase. And that's kind of how it gets viewed. So I lay all this out to say, first of all, it's the original letter writer. Uh, it, it, I, 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 again, I have to believe that these things are disingenuous. Just like a lot of people, you know, it, and some of the, you know, people sent me some links to a stream like did you see what this person is saying about you yeah they're 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 straw manning and they're gaslighting my points yes yes i i understand they're doing that because you know it makes them feel better you know it helps them it helps them out you know they don't feel as bad about their tiny dick i understand but if, what are you gonna do like like they have the right to do this i just i would like to see people at least and and certainly with me just argue on the level like i it just don't don't create this phony bullshit like i i the one of the most annoying things about social media and, and youtube and everything else is this pretend ignorance i've talked about this with a friend 
Like, I, I hate this pretend ignorance that goes on. Like, are you saying that? No, nobody, no one, no one. You know, I, I have to assume you're, you're, you're mentally subnormal if you're inventing these kinds of things. I, but, but you're not. It, this is all just a, a, a joke. But, yeah, ideology exists. And it definitely gets put into comics. And the question is, how much of it, you know, what do we want to do with it? But anyway, I, it's all about perspective. I guess that's my point here. You know, have some perspective, both in what you're being presented and then what you want to do about it. And they get to the person who wrote it at the beginning. Um, then do what you want. You know, I, as I said, I can give you dad advice, but I am not your dad. You, ha you, you be you. And, 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 you know, if, you, if you're at a con, I'll still have a beer with you. You being whatever you, you want to be. Uh, unless you're a dick. But, you know, other than that, th thanks for listening.